Well, um, you know, uh, I think the two experiences that we've had uh, playing another team have been really beneficial. You know, the, the total experience of going to UD Arena, playing obviously an excellent program in Dayton, in front of their fans, you know, traveling, having that game day feeling and experience uh, in front of a real visiting crowd. I don't know how you can't gain from that experience, and we did. And, you know, we had a close scrimmage against Notre Dame, and, uh, you know, Micah is an excellent coach. And um, being able to play them in South Bend, although behind closed doors, you know, ACC team, you know, I think, again, we had a great learning opportunity, you know, traveled up there, stayed overnight, traveled back. So I think those two experiences, in addition to just the everyday grind of the practice, have uh, have prepared us here for for the season opener. And, and look, um, you know, it's an outlier when you lose a starter uh, for the season before the season begins, you know. Um, it doesn't happen a lot. Uh, it's happened here quite a bit the last couple of years, unfortunately. But we lost Lucina Treor, and I bring that up because here in a couple of weeks, nobody will remember that he was on our team, in particular because he didn't play here a year ago or two years ago, so there's no familiarity with him. But uh, we've had quite a few practices now without him, and we've been able to reinvent ourselves, I think, put ourselves in a good position to move forward without the, a lot of the good things that he did. But his rebounding numbers, you know, I've coached two people that have averaged a double-double for a season, uh, one of which Ryan Anderson is on our staff right now, and the other guy is DeAndre Ayton, who's the number one pick in the draft. It, it's very difficult to do. You think of the great players that have played at Xavier, like, you know, Tyrone and David West. You know, those are guys that come to mind of averaging a double-double uh, or close to a double-double. So Lucina did that last year at Long Beach State, protecting the rim, blocking shots, rebounding, physicality, uh, old, tough. He gave us a lot of those things. And, and uh, I'm bringing it up because you ask about our fall. That's a big part of our fall right there. Dealing with it, overcoming it, getting to the other side of it, and, and being good without him. Last year, with the new faces you had, you talked about not being able to implement some stuff until during the season, like a post trap and a press break. Are, are you able to implement some of those things now with the with the experience you got in the portal? Yeah, I mean, uh, last fall was incredibly difficult because you know you just had a lot of first year players in college basketball. Not only first year players for our program in our program, but guys that are 19 years old. Uh, you know, several guys that are were new to the United States. So, you know, you have to walk before you run. And uh, our work ethic and our commitment level a year ago was very good. That wasn't our issue. Uh, but, you know, to judge us in those first couple of months a year ago, there was just a few things that we wish we would have been more further along or better than. Uh, and that hurt us at times. It, it did as we as we moved towards the Big East Conference. Uh, this year, we, we've moved much faster because the guys on our team are older. They're not 19. And although they may be new to our system as a first-year player at Xavier, you know we have a lot of guys that are in their fourth year, fifth years uh, playing college basketball. So they just can pick things up easier. And, and just physically, uh, they're, they're more built for the everyday battle of practice. Uh, you know, when you're dealing with a lot of young players, some of it is like convincing them, letting them understand you're going to be okay. I know you've never practiced this much or this hard, but you're going to be all right. Uh, with our current team, we really don't have that issue because there's so much familiarity uh, with college basketball on our roster. Coach, you were talking about the, the rebounding ability of Lacina and losing him. Last year, it felt like after games, we would talk to you sometimes, and, and that was an issue, that the lack of defensive rebounding. You didn't have a guy that could maybe go out there and, and grab a board mm -hmm. when you needed to to get a stop. Are there guys without Lucina now, are there still guys on this roster that you feel confident in can, can go in and get a defensive rebound when you need it? Yes, for sure. But we really have to be good at rebounding as a group. You know, um, um, our guards, guys like Davion, 
Ryan Conwell, Dante Maddox, Trey Green. You know, you may look at them and not think rebounding, but on our team, they have to be physical. They have to block out. They have to go get the ball. We're going to have to rebound as a team. But our wings, guys like Marcus Foster and Daylon Swain, Jerome Hunter have great size. And then obviously one of the best things Zach Fremantle has done in his career here at Xavier is defensive rebound. Uh, he's been able to do it at a very high level. And uh, obviously John Ugly is another guy that we're counting on to be able to do that. But on one hand, did we lose our best in that area? Yes. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I think the way you make up for it isn't just to put one player in, in Lucina's role. You have to just really emphasize it and do it as a group. And we've had teams both here at Xavier and during my time where you couldn't really point toward the, towards that one player that was a great defensive rebounder. But for some reason, as a group, as a team, we were very good because we just had contributions across the board in that area. And, and that's what we have to do this year. But was that a big problem last year? Monumental. Like, we weren't able to overcome it. it. It was that big of a problem. And we have to be much better in that area that when the team misses, that we get the ball. In a lot of ways, you guys will look similar from year to year. You talk a lot about do what we do. Uh, but for a fan who, who is looking in from the outside, what ways might you look different this year stylistically? Yeah, I, I think that we have more firepower, uh, especially compared to our team last year. Um, I think just in the two years that I've been back at Xavier, uh, we have maybe the ability to shoot more three-point shots per game because we have multiple guys that can do it, some of which may not start the game, but on a given night can have big nights scoring from the three-point line. Um, but a balanced group across the board, uh, I think we have a great opportunity to be a balanced scoring team and to have more firepower from the three-point line. My hope, though, is that a lot of things uh, look the same, but maybe a better version of that, You know, playing with tempo and pace and being very efficient, um, playing man-to-man -man defense and just being better. Uh, tougher across the board. Uh, Sean, is there a limit to how fast you want to play? Is there any uh, outer limit there? No, we want to push the pace. Um, I'm, we believe that that's how the game's played. Um, you know, I think the more possessions, the more that pace and tempo are a part of the game. Uh, we want to develop a team that's very comfortable playing that style. Um, so, you know, I don't know if there's necessarily like me giving you numbers of shots or possessions that we like. But what I would hope you would see as the college season unveils that we're one of the more up-tempo teams playing, uh, in both in our own conference, which we were the last two years, and, and really, really nationally. And, and look, when you do that, the danger is always taking good shots and really taking care of the ball. Uh, you don't want to play fast and just throw it up there, or you're playing fast, but also reckless. So uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're certainly after that same type of identity on offense, play with pace. What about the, the rotation? Realistically, how many guys you, can you play? Eight, nine, 10? You know, I think we're looking at nine at the moment. Uh, you know, the ninth guy, whoever he, he becomes or is, you know, there, there'll be games where he plays more, and sometimes maybe a little less, but we're going to call on that depth to, to play at the pace that we play at, um, you know, to hold guys accountable to playing both ends, you know, where we can play with pace, but we can also defend and rebound. And, uh, you know, just having a lot of guys that can take a break during the game, uh, guys that can, can come in off the bench fresh and uh, give us great effort. And, and we believe in our bench, like the difference between those that won't start and a number of our starters isn't as big. And uh, you know that's, I think, one of the characteristics that, that we like about our team. And, and that's a big statement because, you know, in essence, we've lost one starter. So sometimes when that happens, you lose your depth. Uh, I don't think we've completely lost our depth. Coach, last year it was Dez was the sophomore looking to make a jump. And now you have two freshmen in Dalen and Trey who were all Big East freshmen last year. Can you see a higher degree of comfort in just with being thrown into the fire as freshmen last year in the brief 
two game sample that you have against Notre Dame and Dayton? For sure, um, we were thrilled to to you know be able to get both Dalen and Trey back. Those guys both really love the game. Uh, they're committed to their own development. You know, as far back as the spring, both guys made a jump. You know, after their freshman year, especially in the weight room, uh, and then they've both had uh, equally good summers. And you can see the difference in experience, both in our two scrimmages and our, like you mentioned, almost 30 practices now this fall. Uh, they're just more mature. Uh, they have, you know, a year ago they were just trying to figure it all out. They've been through an entire season. And there's a big difference in a player going from year one to year two. So, you know, Dalen, first of all, physically is much different, carrying almost uh, 220 pounds. A year ago, he was in the 190s. Uh, that's a big jump. And, and Trey hasn't gained necessarily a lot of weight because he has a smaller frame. But, you know, he's a year older and stronger and more, more equipped to be successful. Do you expect your jerky tweet to blow up as much as it did? <laughs> uh, it, n no, because I, that wasn't my intentions. Uh, my intentions were just, I, I'm not sure what, what made me see it, uh, do it, but I guess maybe just mixing up a boring Twitter, right? Trying to uh, spice it up, yeah. And, and one thing led to another.